Hi everyone, welcome to Electronics with Professor Mughal. Yet another exciting video on an FPJ product. Have you ever wondered how does these ATM machines or vending machines for that matter works? Well, you'll get to know about them, how they work or they are built right now, right here. And believe it or not most of the modules that we will need for this video we have already done it in the past now leave the link of the videos in the description that I would highly recommend watching those before you watch this one but if you are short on time I'll try to explain as much as I can in this video so let's get rolling let's start with the outline for this video so we're gonna first start up with the project features followed by a demo of the ATM machine and then we're going to talk about the functional block diagram, uh, RTL schematic, how everything is wired up, all the modules that we need to create, followed by the coding. For the sake of time, I've already typed everything with comments. I'm just going to quickly go over, explain as much as I can in detail and then follow it up by the implementation onto an FPGA port. Let's quickly go to the project features. So this is going to be an ATM machine which we're going to implement onto basis three board and it's going to be capable of depositing and withdrawing money from an account just like any conventional ATM machine. It's also going to display the current balance on the seven segment display. We are going to use switches and we're going to use six of them to input a dollar amount which could be a dollar, five dollar, twenty dollar, fifty dollar, hundred dollars. Uh, and that would determine what type of dollar bill you would deposit or withdraw from the account. So switches will be the input here. And like I said, we got six different kinds to deposit or withdraw six different dollar amounts. We are going to use buttons to deposit and withdraw. So the up button uh, is going to be used for a deposit and the withdraw button is going to be used for the um, the, which is going to be the down button. The down button is going to be uh, for use for withdrawing the money from the account. Uh, we are we, we have a eight bit counter uh, for simplicity. So that would mean uh, you can only deposit up to two hundred and fifty five dollars. Unfortunately, uh, but just for the sake of simplicity, obviously you know you can expand on this if needed but the maximum amount of money you can deposit into the account is $255. There are three LEDs in this project that will be used uh, as an output and they will indicate a certain event. So LED zero would mean uh, maximum deposit amount has reached. So LED one ensures that one switch is selected at a time. Okay. So you cannot have two different dollar amounts uh, switched to high position at one time. If you do, it will indicate LED 1. And then also the third LED is going to be used for, uh, you can't go below this amount, basically meaning that you don't have enough balance in your account. Okay. And then the center button is going to reset the machine. It, say, it resets the counter and everything you start from the scratch. Let's now move on to demo. So I'm going to press the center button to reset the seven segment display. It resets the ATM machine. I got my six different dollar amounts here. Switch not represents dollar bill. Switch two represents five dollar bill and so on. And switch 10 is hundred dollar. So say if I have the switch 10 set to position high and if I press up, which is supposed to deposit this money, the counter goes up by hundred. Now if I press the up button again, the counter will go up by $100 because I got the switch 10 set to up position. Let's draw a different dollar amount. So I have the switch 10 up in the up position. I'm going to deposit $5 which is switch knots. But when I do that, notice here the LED turns on and that's because, because I got two different dollar amounts selected at the same time. So I'm going to turn this off and as soon as I do that, that LED will go off and if I try to deposit money it should go up by 5 so 205 if I keep on depositing it 
it will keep on incrementing by five dollar once it reaches 250 and I press one more time $255 in there now I have reached the maximum money I can deposit into the bank now that I have reached the maximum limit which is $255 if I try to deposit any money it's actually not going to do anything instead it's going to give me this LED light which is a warning basically indicating that the maximum limit has been reached now I'm gonna start depositing uh, withdrawing the money now again I got the five dollar uh, maybe I'll just turn it off and I have fifty dollars in up position so I'll start going down pressing the down button and it will keep on going down decrementing by a 50 so 155 here 105 55 50 five dollars now I have five dollar in there in the bank I'm going to say if you want to withdraw ten dollars definitely you know you don't have enough many enough money uh, in the account it should give you a flag and that's what I'm gonna do so say I'm going to turn the switch forward to on position and press the down button so withdrawing ten dollar where I have five dollar and it basically does not nothing uh, instead it gives me this warning light tells me you don't have enough money in your account so this is a very simple ATM machine right here audio schematic right here we have a total of 12 modules here and uh, believe it or not eight of those modules we have already done in the past in several of my videos I'm going to post a link in the description and also on your screen. A lot of eight is actually FPGA project number eight on my project playlist. And if you go back and watch that video, the system block diagram looked something like this. We are using the very same system block diagram, integrating it over here. I'm just adding four different modules here. One, this deposit. The second one is withdraw, the third one is the ATM, and the fourth one is the counter. So these four modules, this is what I'm going to primarily be focusing upon because the rest of it is, has already been covered a few times. And uh, of course we have these D-pounds buttons also because we, we are using up button and down button. So let's just quickly go through what's going on. We got up button that goes through D-pounds, we got down button that goes through D-pounds. So the pulse output is then fed into deposit module and withdraw module. So up button is for deposit that goes over here. Down button goes to the withdraw. And the basic purpose of this module is basically just trigger a signal. If the up button is pressed, so it basically allows a trigger signal which is fed into the counter which means count up basically an increment, right? Whatever the money is in the account, it will just add that money add whatever is at the input similarly withdraw module is just making sure when the countdown signal is triggered that means we are supposed to decrement it whatever the dollar amount is set through these switches we have six switches right here these representing different dollar amounts those go into the atm uh, and uh, that would be reflected at the output whatever that money is five dollar twenty dollar hundred dollar we also have LED as an output over here which basically makes sure that you don't have two different dollar amounts high at the same time once that dollar amount goes into this counter module we make sure whether the decrement signal is triggered or increment if increment and it basically counts this amount and then keep on adding it if decrement then it just keep on subtracting the output which is an 8 bit final value the account balance which i've declared as account this is something that is fed into this binary to bcd converter over here okay so those four modules the output of the counter module is fed into binary to bcd also notice you have these led two and three those just indicates that uh, maybe you have exceeded the maximum amount of money that you can deposit which is 255 dollars or you are trying to withdraw money you don't have you don't have enough money in your 
account so it will indicate an LED and rest is pretty self-explanatory uh, it's very important folks to understand the functional block diagram because then just it makes a lot more easier so we're now going to move on to the coding part and like I mentioned earlier I have already done the coding I'm just gonna go through the four modules that you see u8 u9 u10 u11 all of the other ones we have done it in the past few times in several of my videos so I'm gonna start up with ATM let's see what's ATM module is doing over here so we got six switches here uh, six different dollar bills uh, dollar five dollar ten dollar twenty dollar fifty dollar and hundred dollars then line number 25 is output this which is the amount and that basically just tells you okay uh, what was the dollar amount that was entered into the uh, ATM machine was that a one dollar bill or was that a twenty dollar bill so and then we have the output LED uh, when maximum value is deposited in the uh, account actually that's not the maximum value uh, this just indicates if you have more than one dollar amount entered in other words if you have more than one switch set to high position LED will light up okay um, okay line number 29 now that I have taken care of my topology let's move on to line number 29 I have created a register which I am naming it as bill amount and will assign values here so whatever is entered we will assign a value to it uh, to this variable bill amount one dollar twenty dollar whatever line number 31 there's a comment right here that says only one switch in up position at a time else warning LED light will turn on which is this LED as I mentioned earlier let's look at what is going on between 32 and 43 okay so the input here is the switch so we are looking at the switch anytime there's an event that takes place where is where there is a change in the switch we use a case keyword here to look at those um, you know various scenarios so the first option that a, maybe a dollar bill was uh, inserted if that is the case then the bill amount will be basically just one dollar and that means if switch not is high okay when switch not is high that means one dollar has been uh, deposited okay now to the second case is what if the five dollar bill was deposited uh, so bill amount will basically get five dollar bill here okay so uh, five makes a code of triple zero 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 one zero zero and remember actually I'm gonna use switch two for that and similarly switch uh, four for that and this is going to be six eight and this is going to be switch ten right here okay this is going to be switch ten here okay all right perfect okay so if a switch four is high basically that reflects uh that uh, ten dollar went in so eight bit binary code for ten is double zero double zero one zero one zero similarly next option is twenty dollar so bill amount will get this value that value is twenty dollars twenty that get restored in the bill amount variable sixteen that means fifty dollar bill here's the eight bit code four fifty here and finally if a hundred dollar bill is inserted into the ATM machine bill amount gets hundred dollars and this is the 8-bit representation of hundred in decimal by default nothing has been inserted into the ATM machine so very simple the six dollar different dollar amounts that could be inserted into the ATM machine for deposit or withdrawal and finally we just say assign amount is bill amount so whatever is inserted gets stored 
into the variable amount which we had declared as an output so the total money in the account uh, not really total money but the uh, dollar money inserted into the ATM machine okay all right okay uh, let's now move on to this part remember this part is just making sure that only one switch is up is in a uh, up position at a time else warning LED will turn on so you can only deposit one dollar right at one time I know in some of the fancy machine these days you can have up to like 40 bills entered at the same time but this ATM machine is only going to take one dollar amount bill at a time so again we are using the case keyword here if zero that means one dollar bill actually uh, if zero that means none of the switches none of the switches is on uh, so that means the active uh, no LED will not turn on if one that means it's still zero if it's two then it is still zero if it's four then LED will not still light up if eight LED would not still light up if it's 16 that makes a code of one triple zero double zero double zero again only one switch is high so LED will be zero and then 32 would also means that uh, you know uh, the LED will not light up default uh, active equals to one complement B1 if any of these scenarios are not met then the LED is going to light up okay so uh, again you know if if you didn't understand what's exactly what's going on let's look at line number 59 the binary code for 30 or maybe say 16 the binary code for 16 is what one triple zero and then you got zero 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 right uh, there's only one switch high at one time right uh, and this switch represents a $50 bill correct um, similarly um, if you look at 8 the binary code for 8 is one triple zero uh, one triple zero yeah that's correct so if you look at it there's only one switch that is at the up position and that switch corresponds to twenty dollar okay twenty dollar and to be precise that switch is going to be switch number six in our case okay so this is just making sure only one dollar amount is high at one time and then finally just assigning the LED the output to active Okay, active variable for all these cases it will be zero if any of these cases is not true then it will be one okay let's move on to counter now what's going on over here so if you look at the end topology over here we got the clock here we got the reset button which we get the increment and decrement button these are the money uh, these basically indicate the money has been deposited so we need to increment and if the decrement signal is high that means money needs to be uh, uh, withdrawn okay we also have another input amount uh, this is going to be again the whatever the dollar amount this is basically the same thing which we had over here uh, so whether it was a one dollar bill or a twenty dollar bill or a fifty dollar bill that this would represent this right here and then the output this is the count this is the total money in the account and remember because it's an 8-bit counter so it can only uh, count in the range from zero dollar to 255 dollars so the maximum amount of money you can deposit is 255 and plus we have the two LEDs LED represents uh, when the value goes above 255 because that's all what you can deposit or LED 3 will light up when you don't have enough money to withdraw or basically in other words not enough balance we then have line number 14 where we are creating a variable a register current count and we will basically do the math here uh, addition if deposit subtraction if withdraw let's now focus on this part 
of the code over here okay I got comments at the above uh, above the lines also so computing the balance line number 16 computing the balance in account for deposit and withdrawal that is the major part of this that, that's what this part of the code is doing so for example if the balance is zero dollars uh, which means count is zero dollars and five dollar bill is selected and the deposit signal is triggered that means the current count will be whatever the count was current count plus the deposit amount five dollars so the current count will basically go to five dollars and this is exactly what's happening over here so we're looking at the clock whenever the positive edge of the clock arrive if reset basically sets to zero right else if increment focus over here folks this is important focus over here this line else if increment so what is going over here so say count is zero dollars there's nothing in the bank zero dollar okay you go to the ATM machine you enter five dollar that means zero plus five you got five dollar now five dollar is greater than the count you initially had nothing in the bank but after depositing five dollar now you have a money which is greater than the count which is greater than zero dollar now because now you have five dollars that means this statement is true when this is true the logic basically is one if the increment signal is triggered if the up push button is pressed at the same time one ending with this one this situation this condition is true that means the flag would be raised or the logic will go to one and when that happens again because you are depositing the money so the current count will go up by the amount whatever was inserted into the ATM machine dollar bill or five dollar or twenty dollar so in this case because we assume count was zero and the amount that went in was five dollar so the current count is going to be five dollar similarly if there is a decrement then whatever is the current um, uh, count the uh, will basically get the value which is going to be the count minus amount so if the count was say like fifty dollars and then you trying to do, uh, withdraw say five dollars so current count will be fifty dollar minus five dollar else if there's no input then current count should remain whatever is in the balance or the count and finally line number 29 uh, basically uh, whatever the value in the current count gets stored in count right here let's move on to the next block this is the block which is responsible for making sure that the balance in the account does not exceed 255 remember it's an 8 bit counter okay so here if bunch of if and else statements so if reset then basically set to uh, set to will be will get to zero uh, this is we just declaring as a as a register initially its value is set to zero if reset is pin is high basically it stays zero and this is I've already discussed earlier uh, in those cases it is going to be zero but good thing is like you need to we need to focus over here what's going on over here okay all right so say you have again zero dollar five dollar amount is deposited into the account or maybe we can say I have current count is say $255 I've already reached the max I have two hundred and uh, fifty dollars plus amount i'm trying to deposit a dollar so that would mean 255 plus a dollar that would be 256 dollar which is less than current count which is 55 dollars um 255 dollar that means uh set to is going to be high right so that means you have already exceeded a value of 255 and then finally line number 45 whatever set two uh, will base upon uh, whatever the LED 2 is so if no input the count remains the same and then assigning whatever the set to logic is to LED 2 so there's only one situation when the current uh, balance goes above 255 it will basically set the LED high as a warning that you have exceeded the balance now this LED is doing making sure uh, if the if you don't have enough money to withdraw or you don't have uh, enough balance in the 
in the account. So if you have fifty dollars, you're trying to withdraw hundred dollars. It's going to turn this LED on. So similarly, if reset uh, is a predefined variable set three as a register with value zero. Uh, this is pretty simple and straightforward right here. But let's look at over here. So five dollar, I'm trying to withdraw. And because I got only $1 and $5 is greater than $1, so this logic goes to high. And if the decrement signal is high, then this, this condition will be true. And when that happens, that means you don't have enough money, overflow occurs, and this LED goes to high, right? And if there's no input, the count remains the same and whatever the set 3 is gets stored into variable LED3. Pretty straightforward here, simple. Uh, I do have this the, a withdrawn deposit module, but they uh, act pretty much same. So I just can, I can just quickly go to one of them. Uh, they both are pretty similar. Uh, there's no much difference over here. So uh, notice here um, this part of the code right here we basically have two states okay either the signal is triggered or signal is not triggered s not not is the state where signal is not triggered basically um, that's the state then if button is pressed next state is going to be flagged that means signal has been triggered that means the money needs to be deposited and flag is initially set to a value of one okay if the present state is zero, uh, else next state just basically remains in the S naught state, right? If the current state is one, that means you have already deposited the money into the account, then the next state will be it should trigger back, basically go back, go back to the S naught not the starting state or you know whatever you want to call it. Followed by default begin. At default it should always stay in the s00 state and then finally we have this combination output logic for each state uh, when you are at s0 set flag is going to be zero if the flag that means that signal has been triggered then set flag is going to be high by default it's always going to be zero we save this value set flag into our output variable which we labeled as count up that means whenever this triggers the amount deposited into the account needs to be added to the balance and similarly the withdrawal is very much same there's no change the only change that happens is when this countdown triggered signal is high then whatever the amount entered will be withdrawn from the balance let's look at the constant file real quick we got the clock over here uh, we got the six switches that represent six different dollar amounts. We have the three LEDs as indicators and warning. We have the seven segments over here, the four enablers, and also we got three push buttons. One for reset, which is the center button. The up button is for the deposit and the down button is for the withdraw. Let's quickly do the implementation. I'm going to click my top module and then run implementation here make sure you save everything click ok and then it's gonna do its thing it might take a little while just be patient there you go implementation is complete let's generate the bitstream file click ok here and again it's gonna take a couple of minutes should be quick bitstream has been created I'm gonna uh, once it do that, it will all automatically open up this dialog box. I'm going to click OK. Make sure you have open hardware uh, manager. Make sure your board is plugged in. Make sure you are using a proper USB, micro USB cable. Click open target. And then from here, I'm going to click auto connect. Um, there's no active target available for server at local host. Um, click OK. I'm gonna just unplug it and plug it back again and then try uh, to do that again and hopefully it should work. It was working earlier. Okay, there you go. All right, it detected that. Um, as you can see, I'm going to hit program device, select the RTX 7 chip, and then it should automatically 
select uh, your bit file that it generated and which it does in my case I'm gonna click program and that's pretty much it you should be able to see the implementation of your design onto the board I hope you enjoyed this video folks if you like to get access to RTL schematic project features other supporting files I really encourage you becoming a patron for as low as five dollars I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I kept it very simple but there was a lot of work that needs to be done in order to make this simple AK machine. I kind of give you an idea how these AK machines or vending machines or any machine that dispenses how it works. You know? The memory block is an important part of it because you're remembering the count, right? In this case, we were displaying the current balance using the seven segment display. I'll be making more such videos and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you get the notification and please support the content. It's been amazing so far and I want to keep on doing this, but I need your support. Till next time, take care, stay safe, bye.